Hello and welcome back and today I want to do a very quick video on the subject of NAS and AI. I know, I know, I know it's annoying, but hear me out. In this video I want to talk about why AI in NAS systems is a good thing. Probably. We're seeing this increased use of the AI buzzword on frigging everything from laptops to probably toasters. And right now, network attached storage devices, turnkey NAS solutions like Synology, QNAP, Asus, or TerraMaster, and even DIY solutions and kickstarted NAS solutions for crowdfunding are all leaning so goddamn heavily into the artificial intelligence and LLM low, um, language. It's practically giving me a nosebleed. The real pain for me is, it's one thing to keep highlighting that your NAS will support AI in one shape or form, but the presentation and the way it's been explained to users is just poor. I talked about this with Laurie over at Tech Notice while we are at um, IFA in Berlin. We do some videos, and we saw talking about the subject of AI, because we couldn't move for the subject of AI everywhere. Now, Number one, yes, it's a buzzword. For those of you that are gonna put it in the comments, are oh, they just using it as a buzzword? You're totally right. Brands are just doing that, it's the thing. And frankly, we can't get away from it. But if we dig a little deeper, number one, utilizing an AI or assistant or a tool can be good. Whether you're gonna be using an LLM, like your likes of your chat GPT, your Gemini, your whatever, or using AI recognition services, the main reason anyone should be utilizing these things is to save time. That's the big one. It's same time, save time. You shouldn't be utilizing it to replace something that already works. And it's the same reason we see a lot of industries from gaming to movies to actors currently, you know, SAG right, um, uh, strikes and stuff like that. Because it's when large organizations use AI instead of people where the problems start. Whereas if you use the AI services and AI tangential services, again, LLMs and more, as tools and assistance tools, that's when things get really good. And ultimately, in terms of a NAS, AI in a NAS should do one, it should save time. Number two, it should lower barriers that are caused by jargon, uh, caused by um, learning curves, and just difficulty with making the most of your data. And that goes number three, maximizing data efficiency. And that's why NAS and AI right now is starting to get where it's good. Now, prior to the last few years, if you heard the word AI and NAS, it generally meant one thing. It meant AI recognition or AI searches in one form or another. Traditionally, photos, I think, has been the most hit one where you'd upload all your photos. And because the AI, and again, we're being very loose with the term AI here, is based on an existing set of rules and identifiers, it was able to utilize that to go through loads of photos and find images of things, humans, animals, um, trees, landscapes, blah, blah, blah. But that's not really assistance in the broadest sense. It's actually helping you filter, which then you have to manually do things afterwards to take advantage of it. Again, it was a recognition tool. And after that, when you get to live analysis tools uh, towards things like surveillance, that's when you need a decent, powerful system in conjunction with a database. So it's one thing to say that is a person, but it's another one to say that is a person, his name is David Trent, and he does work here, call off security. It's a big, big difference of where AI recognition goes. And that latter one needs a database and power because the work is being done live. But an increase in CPUs from the big manufacturers that are gearing more towards a lot of this live recognition and live AI tool and analysis, recognition is becoming lesser and lesser resource intensive. It's still pretty intensive, but it's getting better. And I think we're gonna see real world NAS utilization in these fields in the next few years. But the way AI is being implemented and the way it's being presented in terms of modern NAS, and that's across all of the brands now, is to do with that learning language model, LLM, and its implementation. And the biggest, biggest, biggest advantage, and this is the one that I argue a lot online, and this is one of the reasons, as I say, it will hopefully be good for NAS, is having a learning language model to completely remove any of the barriers to just tell the system what to do. I want the ability to look at my NAS and then either via a text, via a message that I send to it, or activating a mic and telling it, I want to tell it disable network access. I want to tell it 
send that file to Alan, one of my users. Send, uh, I want that file backed up. I want the system to manage that database. I want to give this user access to that. I want to share that file with them. I want to tell the system to do things, but I want to be able to do it in human language. I don't want to have to dick around, go into control panel, control panel, go into hardware and power, go to the third tab of hardware and power, scroll to the bottom, go to the bottom of hardware and power, go in there, make sure you've got the right user. I don't want to do that. I want to be able to just tell the system what to do and it does it and it understands me. And that's what I mean about language learning models in LLM because that is the way to do it. Because up until then, trying to use voice recognition on any kind of control, there is too many, um, there's too much ambiguity, there's so many things that you can say that aren't in the database without it going, I don't understand. But this is the other massive, massive, massive issue that's up there with AI and network attached storage being presented in the egregiously aggressive way that it is. And that is having an AI that is locally deployed only. Let's be honest, bigger, bigger, bigger businesses have got bigger, bigger, bigger confidentiality and security concerns, be they medical businesses, legal practices, dealing with consumer data, or if it's just simple human resources in your business, a lot of users just wanna know that if they are going to use these services, that that data is not being used elsewhere. And that's why things like Google Gemini, things like ChatGPT, Azure AI, and all that kind of stuff, all of these businesses need to know when they're using those services that that data isn't being used elsewhere or that the information they provide isn't teaching something else. Locally deployed LLMs and AI services on a NAS is paramount. And that's what people want. They want to be able to buy a server and not only be able to use all those human controls and human access, but also to buy back that time thanks to these more efficient, faster, responsive um, AI services on a system that doesn't have outside access. Now, to give you two great examples, when we were at uh, uh, IFA in Berlin, there was a brand there, Zeta Lab, they're working on a crowdfunding product. I don't know if it's going to release. It might fail. Who knows? But when I was there, I was playing with it, and I was able to give it unique human command. It had a database of books, and then I asked it to tell me who is Hamlet. I went on there and said, who's the villain of this? And it only had access to the books that were in the system, the ebooks that were on there, the database. It didn't have any internet access, and it was able to present me with answers. That's a good thing if you've got a larger database and you want to know, for example, if you're in a hospital and you're a medical um, officer and you want to be in there and say, show me um, all of our patients between 2018 and 2023 that have received this drug that are between the ages of 18 and 25 and how many of them showed signs of uh, issue. Now, trying to put that into a Sheets document, trying to use Excel, it's possible, with a lot of filters, but it requires a lot of jargon knowledge, a lot of spreadsheet knowledge, and time. Whereas being able to ask it in that human fashion and get results offline to me is hugely desirable. Now, there are other brands that are approaching this right now in another way. And they are ones, again, like Synology, who are integrating AI Admin Console. And that allows you to integrate a third party LLM like ChatGPT or Gemini with your API key and allow certain apps and services within the Synology portfolio access to that off-site LLM support. Now, obviously, that's not ideal because there'll be a lot of users, again, where it's their confidential data, and what they're effectively doing is allowing a third-party service access to some databases to crawl and get that information back. Now, there is elements of control in AI Admin Console. You can restrict access to certain confidential information and formats of information. Also, different directories have to be selected one by one. But it's still not avoiding, I think, for a business that deals with confidential data, there is something about allowing a third party to process uh, uh, the data that's going to be annoying. And that's why we're still, even when we're seeing um, public services that take advantage of Google uh, workspace, Office, um, Microsoft 365 and stuff like that. All of these service providers are very reluctant to take advantage of the enhancement of AI because they're slightly worried about how much access is being given to it. And with a local NAS system, they've already taken their data off of the cloud. Why on earth would they like to give what's ostensibly a cloud computing service access to their data? 
But realistically, that's why I feel that AI utilization in its many forms in a NAS is a good thing, as long as it's locally deployed only. And in the next 12 to 18 months, you're gonna see a lot more solutions rolling out with locally deployable AI services. There's gonna be those of us that aren't gonna like it. We're just gonna say we don't trust it. We don't like the idea of an AI being given the ability to perform things where all it takes is a person to ask it and therefore where's the security layers and there's a whole lot more to work through between now and eventual deployment but personally i like the integration of ai in nas systems as long as again one it's saving time and it's not replacing something that's already there it's just facilitating ease of access two it lowers the jargon and the technical hurdles between me and getting the job done and finally it increases data efficiency make those three things true sign me up buttercup i'm on board but let me know what you think i'm really looking forward to a discussion on this and i think this isn't the end of the road for this subject Go to the comments below and let's talk. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.